Hi, Charlie Black here. I'd like to talk to you today about Tanzu Gemfire for Kubernetes. We're going to do a review of an application and deploy it to Kubernetes and just test drive and see it, see it in action. Let's take a look at the application that we have here. It's just a Spring Boot application providing a REST interface. Uh, we're using Spring's caching abstraction. Uh, so that's what the at cacheable is. And what that'll do is it'll take the parameters of the method there, and those would turn out to be the key. And then the result of the method, which is a string in this case, will be the value. Now, how we tie that into Gemfire is that we use this annotation here called enable caching defined regions. And then that'll set up all the boilerplate that you need uh, for Gemfire to set up the connection to the servers. Okay. Uh, the body of this method uh, just goes off and uses Apache HTTP client to go off and call a method, right? And um, we take the parameters and pass it on to the, um, to the REST service that we're calling. Now, one of the things that I wanted to do or was take that result set. So I'm going to go off and take the response that I get from uh, that service, and I'm going to change it up to say, add an attribute called initial response time. So that way we can get an idea for how long did the original call take? And then how long did the subsequent calls, right? The, taking advantage of the Gemfire as a cache. Let's take a look at some of the resources that get deployed with the application. Here we're looking at a spring profile for my application environment. Um, I have two profiles in here. The active one that uh, normally runs is uh, the dev environment. So here I've set it up to look for a gem fire running on my local machine. And the other profile that is here is a Kubernetes um, profile. Um, since it's a very consistent naming on Tanzu Gemfire for Kubernetes, uh, we can actually go off and make some assumptions on what that locator string would be uh, for our, our application. I'll put a link to a, a, a video down below uh, so that way you can learn more about how the Tanzu Gemfire for Kubernetes names its components. Okay, so how do we get it to the application to use this, this Kubernetes or Kate's profile? Well, in my application, when I go to deploy it, I'm using something called jcube. And in there, it has an ability to set an environment variable that Spring is looking for to set the active profile. So here we can go off and see how we set that application environment to be different when I deploy to Kubernetes. Now that we reviewed all the application components, let's work on deploying this to Kubernetes. First thing that we need to do is create a cluster. I've already created one in the background. If you would like to watch that process of installing the operator and creating a cluster, I have a video. I'll put the link below uh, in the description. Okay, so we, are, we already, I ran this first part. Let's work on the next part, which is creating the region to um, that we will be caching uh, the bikes, the results from, from that at cacheable. So let's connect up to the um, that locator there using this command. And what this will do is just run gfish on that um, locator. Okay, and now that we're uh, there, let's go ahead and connect to the distributed system. All right, so let's go off and create that region. And I'm just going to copy and paste this line in there. So copy and paste. All right, so let's go off and review what's here. And if you'd like to know more about uh, all the options in creating a region, uh, I'll put a link to the Gemfire documentation uh, in the description. All right, so we're going to go off and create a region, and it's going to be named by cache. And that'll line up with what we saw in the at cacheable annotation. The type is going to be partition, so that just means it's scalable. As I need more RAM or resources, I can easily add another server to the cluster and be able to handle more workload. Um, I'm going to use expiration on here, and I'm going to have a time to live, right? So 
from the time that the cache entry is put into Gemfire, uh, it has 60 seconds to live. So if I come back in 61 seconds or so, um, then it'll recall that key, right? So whatever that is, the method will run again. Um, and then what do I want to do when that expiration um, expires? Well, I just want to destroy the entry, right? I don't want it, um, a given zip code or whatever it is uh, to be using any other memory. So we're just going to go off and destroy it. So that way we'll, we'll probably, if no one's using the system, we'll have no entries in, in RAM. And then if it's a very hot system, then we'll be, end up using resources. Um, this last one is just something that you have to do to put in there to make sure the timers are, are running is that you have to enable statistics true just so that way um, the time to entry time to live can work properly. All right, so let's go off and create that region. All right, so now that we created that region, let's go ahead and exit out uh, and work on the next step here. All right. Um, in, when I was reviewing the application, there I talked a little bit about how the um, method parameters turn into a key. Well, that key uh, definition is defined by Spring, right? It's actually called a simple key. So what we need to do is deploy the um, class definition to Gemfire, because what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to deserialize that key on the servers to make sure data can be found, right? So when a client asks for um, a key, it needs to match the key on the servers. So let's go off and deploy that uh, resource to our cluster. So we're gonna go off and download this from Maven. Uh, I'm pretty sure I can automate this, but for right now, we'll just download that from Maven, and then we're going to do the next step, which is just connect up with Gfish, just like we did before. I guess I could combine some of these steps so that way I don't have to log in a couple times to a connect. And then we're going to deploy the um, artifact, right? Deploy a jar. Oops, I can type. And it's something like uh, spring context. And yes, I do want to deploy. All right, so now that resource is uh, deployed. So I should be able to now connect up my application and Gemfire will understand the keys that it's using. Now that we've have our spring classes deployed to Gemfire, let's deploy the application to Kubernetes. Um, I could have easily used you know, my IDE to run all this stuff, but um, let's just use the command line here. So copy and paste into a terminal. And uh, let's watch this build and deploy. All right, now that our build is there, Let's go off and see this in action. So I used K9s here to take a look at our application and it is deployed to Kubernetes. But first, let's take a look at its IP address. So that way I can access it with a tool that I'm gonna go off and test out the interface. Um, since I deployed it with a load balancer, here's the IP. I can just copy and paste that into here, which should Probably be the same because I already did this. All right, so now that we have our load balancer in there, we can go ahead and test out our at cacheable service. So let's put in a different zip code uh, and let's hit send. And so this is the first response. So we can take a look at the response here. And this is the JSON attribute that I added in there. So we can see that the initial response from the server took, um, you know, uh, 1,350 milliseconds, right? And, um, you know, there's a little bit of overhead for the, the internet connection, but let's run this again, right? So I've 
it should be less than the 60 seconds that I had there. So let's go ahead and hit the reply again. And we can see that it's been a it was a little bit quicker. So this time it was 136 milliseconds. Let's hit it again, 120, 106. So we can see that that initial call was quite long, right? It took 100, um, 1,350 milliseconds, and now we're down to 100 milliseconds or so. So let's just try another try that again, so that way we can see it from another zip code. And uh, let's hit send. So here we got a little bit faster response from um, our server. Uh, this time it was 282, 282 milliseconds. Um, so let's hit the, hit it again and see what happens. So we're down to 120 milliseconds. I mean, uh, 100 milliseconds, 112 milliseconds. So you can see the how caching uh, makes things faster. Um, and then don't forget that caching can also make things cheaper, right? So let's just say that each one of those um, calls to that service costs it a dollar, right? So if I keep on hitting this, that would have added up one, two, three, four, five, five dollars, right? Why it doesn't seem like that much over time where you have hundreds of thousand calls per day, that it can add up to a substantial amount of money. So caching is always good in an application. So let's review. Um, we saw how easy it was to set up our Tanzu Gemfire application. It was just two annotations, right? The at cacheable and then the other annotation where we hook up Gemfire. Um, super simple to get caching enabled on your application. Then we deployed that application to Kubernetes and saw how those profiles worked. And uh, let's see, then we finished it up with seeing that in action, right? Where we had uh, almost two, min two seconds for the response to come back. And then it was much faster, right? With, the, with um, not hitting that other service and using the cached instance. Really a lot of stuff. If you have any questions, um, please leave your comments below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Um, thanks for listening and have a great day.